What's going on everybody? So today we are taking a closer look at the X-Tool D1 Pro. Stick around and I'll tell you all about it. So to start off, Xtool did send me this unit free of charge for a review. Um, I have reviewed a couple of diodes in my time, and so it's not out of character for me to do it. Um, this is one that I have actually enjoyed quite a bit, um, and there's a couple of things that I want to highlight. Starting off, I want to talk about the build quality and assembly the software that comes with it, and other third-party softwares that you're able to use. I also want to talk about the feature of having a rotary. We'll also talk about cut and engrave and the capabilities that it has there. So to start off, let's talk about the build quality. When I got this, I was rather impressed at the build quality and the simplicity of how this is all put together. Ultimately, you cannot put this together incorrectly. It's built in such a way that this is the left rail, that is the right rail, this is the front, that is the back. It all goes together the way that it's supposed to. You have the, the screws that you need, and even inside of the instruction manual, it's almost dummy proof because they give you one-to-one -one ratio diagrams of the screws and where they go. So all in all, I feel like the build quality and the sturdiness of the machine is tremendous. Um, another feature to point out is you can see that I have the extension poles here already put in because I was last using the rotary. That's a great feature because now you don't have to try and figure out some kind of system to lift the laser so you can use the rotary. It's already designed to have these feet put in so that way it lifts the whole body of the, the, the laser so you can use the rotary at its appropriate height. Granted, if you have larger items that you're wanting to put on the rotary, you may still have to lift it higher or to use the, even the, the chuck feature, which is something that I haven't even had the time to get into. But it's pretty impressive from a small rotary to have that chuck available as well. So let's jump over and let's talk a little bit about software. So the X tool does come with software that you can use. It's, it's fairly straightforward. It seems fairly user friendly. I have not used it much because I have a long-standing experience with Lightburn, which is a third-party tool that you can actually use with the X tool. Honestly, I prefer Lightburn, but there are a couple of features that you may prefer over on the, the X tool creative space. In that tool, you're actually able to connect to the machine to Wi-Fi and send your projects to the machine. One of the features that you get that is more advanced from Lightburn is actually the feature of being able to control the machine where it is and use other start positions rather than just an absolute coordinate like you would from the Creative Space software. Personally, I prefer Lightburn because it has a lot of powerful features and tools within it and it can still use the rotary and all the features and more of this machine. I've, spent, I've used Lightburn for many years, and it's just my preferred software, along with a lot of the laser community. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the X-Tool rotary. This rotary, for its small, compact size, seems to have a ton of features. One, just to start out, the rotary itself is adjustable to be better fit different kinds of drinkware or whatever cylindrical items that you're using. So you can actually go ahead and 
unscrew each one of these, move them over, move them closer, so that way it best fits what you're working on. Another added feature is the support here. So this support is so that way you can use tapered items, put that down here, and it's nice and easy to adjust to help get the item level to the laser head. Nice feature. So last but not least, you can actually install the chuck onto this rotary. You adjust how this sits over here and you're able to actually put the, the chuck off of this side and make it into a chuck rotary, which is better for your smaller items, you know, say rings, jewelry, things like that, that need a chuck rotary. You can also use it for some of your smaller tumblers. So lots of different features there, but all in all the rotary, I have been pretty impressed with. I have done a couple of different cups on the rotary with this machine, and I'll show you a couple here, so take a look. Honestly, the, the quality of the engraving that came off of these was actually very similar to that of my CO2 laser. Granted, the speeds were a little different, the powers were a little different, but all in all, say on a black tumbler, results were very similar. Keep in mind though, black was great, white wasn't so much. I, I used multiple passes on a white tumbler, different settings, and wasn't able to get the same results and sheen that I get off of my CO2. So for white tumblers, I still prefer my CO2 laser over a diode laser. All right, so let's talk about cutting with the X-Tool. So you can cut with the X-Tool. And granted, where you're gonna find that it is best is at solid wood. So a solid basswood panel is going to be great for this machine. Uh, I use the majority of what I do with plywood. So was I able to cut in one pass with Baltic birch ply? Yes, I was. it was not as clean or as pretty as my CO2 laser. And so that would still take the cake and that's, that would be part of my workflow. But you can do it. And if you're using other woods that are more suited to this application, it's gonna be great for you. One thing that I do love about this build compared to others is it already comes with the hookup so you can add an air assist to it. So I actually have a pump from one of my other machines that I was able to just take the hose, plug into here, and have instant air assist. So one of the things that I love is that it does have that feature already built into it. So now let's talk about the part where I feel like the X tool really takes the cake. And I feel like it's probably going to become part of my workflow for specific items that I like to use is engraving.
I used a couple of different materials to, to see what its spectrum of capabilities is. So on this one, you can see that is a business card, you know, an aluminum business card that's kind of uh, black coated on there. And you can see that I did a picture that turned out rather well. I think with a little bit more adjustment uh, of the image, it would come out even better. So I feel like the results here are probably more based off of my editing skills than it was the machine itself. And I think it could be better. Um, some of the other things that I did, again, this is wood, so plywood, and I've got a couple of Thor's hammers on here. So this one uh, was the very first one, altered some settings, made it some nice and clear here, and then this one is actually an image that I pulled off the internet to do another Thor's hammer. So more of an image engraving rather than these that are vectors. But all in all, I feel like all of them came out looking pretty good other than this one that was a little bit overburned, but that's just uh, messing with the settings and getting used to the machine itself. And here is where I saw results that I feel like I'm gonna use on some Christmas gifts that I have coming up because I am going to be doing some different spoons and different things to give away as Christmas gifts. And I feel like this burn, the look that you have right here is really what I'm looking for for the handles of these spoons and things that I'm looking to do. So honestly, I like how the colors came out, but it didn't take away a ton of material. Like I can't even actually grab an edge with my fingernail. This is completely just changing the color of the wood rather than vaporizing it like I get results with the CO2 laser, which isn't always what I want. Like this, I want to be able to see the image, see that it's nice and dark, but at the same time, not have a big recess in there. So now let's talk about price and whether it's worth it. So this machine, as it comes, um, is around seven to $800, depending on the time of year, what prices you can get or discounts you can get. This is the 10 watt model. You can upgrade to a 20 watt, which is going to make it easier to make cuts and do some of that thicker materials. Um, and it will give you obviously increased speeds because you'll have more power that you can use for engraving. But I feel like it is worth it for this machine. It's a good quality machine and compared to some other diodes that I've used, it's rather sturdy. Honestly, when I was using it and I had it going, you know, at some of the higher speeds that I could get on it, the machine wasn't moving around. It was staying still, it was nice and steady. So honestly, for the build, for what you're getting, like if you get the rotary package with it, it has a lot to offer at that price point. So honestly, I'm really impressed with the machine and I think that I'm gonna be using it quite a bit here in the future as we get into some of those niche items that will fit well with this machine for especially engravings like I want to do. All right, everybody, that is a wrap. So if this video was helpful to you, if you liked the content, please like the video and subscribe so you can see more in the future. If this video also helped you to decide on purchasing an X tool, then please go down to the description and you'll find all the links that you need there. Again, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.